What's up YouTube? Welcome back. Today we're going to take another look at a lead code SQL interview question. This one's marked as medium and it's part of SQL 50 lead codes. Curated list of SQL problems to start with. This one's pretty new. I haven't solved this one before. It doesn't have an official solution on lead code. So I thought it'd be perfect for me to try it. It's pretty realistic as well in terms of coming up in an actual interview. So let's get into it. Now this one's called confirmation rate and I think that's why I like it. It sounds like it's very realistic in terms of being on the actual job at a big tech company when you're working there as a data scientist, a data analyst. Now, our task is that the confirmation rate of a user is the number of confirmed messages divided by the total number of requested confirmation messages. Confirmation rate of a user that did not request any confirmation messages is zero should round the confirmation rate to two decimal places, write a solution to find the confirmation rate of each user and return the result table in any order. We have two tables, one called signups, one called confirmations, and we have example data for both of them. Now signups includes a user ID and a timestamp of when that user signed up for that service overall or that platform and confirmations has information on the confirmation messages. It has the user ID, a timestamp of when that confirmation message got requested, and then an action that can either be confirmed or timeout. Confirmed if the message was successfully confirmed and timeout if the user hasn't confirmed the message in the time frame that they were allowed to respond within. Now, we have example data that Maybe it's good to take it as an example here. We have signups of user ID 3, 7, 2, and 6 in 2020. And then we have confirmation data for user 3, 7, and 2. Noticeably, we don't have data for user ID 6. And we should calculate the confirmation rate for each user. And as the problem statement said, it would be zero if there's no confirmation messages requested at all. Now that is also in the example output. User ID 6 would have a confirmation rate of zero. User ID 3 would have um, zero because all of their message requests timed out. And seven has 1.0, so 100% confirmation rate. That means they confirmed all of their requested confirmation messages. User ID 2 has a 50% confirmation rate, which means they have confirmed one of the two confirmation messages. So far, so good. That sounds pretty intuitive. Now let's think about how to get this. Now what's interesting for this question, in my opinion, is that the confirmation table has confirmed messages and also unconfirmed ones, those that have the timeout. Usually, I would expect that table to only have the confirmed ones or everything to be stored in different places have all the requests in one place and all the confirmations in another. But this one luckily already has a combination of that. So we have timeout and confirmations. So I think what we can do is we can just use the confirmations table and already get a confirmation rate from there. So if I select the user ID, because we want to get this per user ID, right? Then the confirmation rate then we could actually already calculate that for all users who are in that table. Now we're gonna have user ID six that is not in the confirmations table. So we need to take care of that later on, but let's just start here. Now, in order to do this, I guess we could count up the confirmed messages as a case statement, like an if. So case when that field is confirmed, case when action equals confirmed, then we could yeah, assign this uh, one and then count it up and we have the number of confirmed actions and then divide it by the total number of actions. So we could divide by count star per user ID and we could get a confirmation rate. I think what's even easier here is to take the average of those that are confirmed. So bear with me, I'm gonna do the same thing here where I say case when action equals confirmed, then that's what I was hinting at, then one 
else zero end. So this will go through each row and assign a one if the value of action is confirmed, if the confirmation message was actually confirmed and a zero otherwise. So if it's a timeout. And if we take an average of that, it's pretty much like summing it all up and dividing it by the total number of messages, uh, message requests in there. So yeah, that makes it a bit shorter. So we do the average instead of doing the sum and then dividing by count star. And that should give us a confirmation rate for those in the table. So we're gonna select this from the confirmations table only. As I said, we don't need signups here, at least not yet. And let's give this a try. We should also group by user ID. And then, yeah, we can return it in any order, so we don't need to order here. And yeah, let's just test run this to see what it gives us. So this one gives us the wrong answer because we don't have user ID six in there, but it seems like we have the correct value for the user ID three, which is zero, seven has one, and two has 0 0.5. Now, one more cool thing, which can make this even shorter, this calculation of the confirmation rate, let's call that confirmation rate even, is then my MySQL or MySQL, you can actually make this statement a lot shorter, this case when. You can just make this, this check of action being confirmed. And this comparison, action equals confirmed, will return true or false. And in the average calculation, true or false will evaluate to one or zero, one for true, zero for false. I've done this a couple of times on this channel, but this just gives us a confirmation rate really quickly. I think this only works in MySQL, not in PostgreSQL or anything else. But yeah, let's check again if the values match and they actually do, but we don't have user ID six in there yet. So let's take care of that. And before we forget, we should only round, we should also round the confirmation rate to two decimal places. So let's do that here real quick while we're at it. Can't type today, I have the microphone in between me and the keyboard. But yeah, let's just wrap this with a round function and uh, specify that it should be two decimal places. And then that's it. Now, how do we get user ID in there as well? Uh, user ID six in there as well, which is in the signups table, has signed up for the platform, but has never requested a confirmation message. You should probably think of a left join here or right join in terms of the order. But yeah, uh, if we did a simple join, we would still have, or an inner join, we would still just have everything that appears in both tables. With a left join, we can actually also include user ID six, which has signed up, but hasn't ever requested a confirmation message. So we can left join signups here. Let's check the order. So we want every user ID that's in confirmations. And then we also want everything in signups. So basically, yeah, we want everything in signups and then the additional info of confirmation rate, if then confirmations. So I think in this order, it wouldn't work left joining signups. But if we switched it around, it would work. We could have a right join here, but I try to always keep it to a left join. So we're just going to switch these two. Let's put signups here. And then, yeah, we left join confirmations to get the confirmation rate. Now, if we did this, we would have each user already in signups, which would be all four of them in this example. And then what will we get for confirmation rate? There's a note data for user ID six in confirmations. So we would get null values to calculate this thing here, this confirmation rate, this bunch of functions right here. So if we run this, let's actually do it. I think we would get uh, null values. In this case, left turn confirmations. I need to specify what we're joining on but then we will probably get a null value. So I could either write this as signups.userid equals confirmations.userid and try it. Or to make it even shorter, I could use the using keyword to, yeah, 
user ID appears in both tables. It's a bit annoying. Let's just use signups because it has all the users and here too. Sorry. So if you run this, try not to distract from the actual solution here, we get a null value for confirmation rate. So what we need to do is wrap this with a function that replaces null values with a zero because that's what the question tells us to do if there's no confirmation rate. Yeah, so this should work and give us zero for user ID six and then we should have the accepted solution for the first time now if we compare it here. Test case also accepted. Now what I was saying in terms of the join here, we could also say using user ID, Let's check if that's the correct syntax because I don't always use it. But yeah, that's also accepted, makes it even shorter. I think the average with the simple action equals confirmed comparison is very cool in MySQL. So I very much like it. Very short solution for a question that has a lot of pieces that have to go to back together. It's just submitted to check if it's actually uh, accepted for all of the different test cases. And yeah, as we see on the left, we get an accepted solution here. I wouldn't mind too much about the execution time for SQL questions or SQL questions, but yeah, that's an accepted solution for lead code 1934 confirmation rate part of SQL 50. If you like this video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of these. I'm also going to go through more strata scratch questions and then probably do a lot more of the SQL 50 and maybe even create a playlist for it. So if you want to see those, just check out my channel for playlists and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye.